got my heels on. <laughs>
it's easy to sing and it's easy to say, but it's so hard to do. And it says, Thy will be done. We, we, we say that quite often, Lord, I, I want your will to be done. But do we really want his will? Because his will goes against what our will wants. Amen. But if I can ever realize that if I truly allow his will to be done, then things work out like they're supposed to, and it brings him glory and honor and praise. Come on, it's a reflection of his kingdom, and, and, and it's an expansion of his kingdom. And when we allow his will to be done, great things happen. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for Brother Huckabee. He's going through some sinus and allergies things. Let's pray for the Hodge family, Brother Dakota's dad. Brother Dakota texted also. He's got a, a good friend that said that their house just burnt, just, I guess, just an hour or so ago. They lost everything. Jesus. He's gone. Let's pray for them. Many other needs represented in the house tonight. Anybody got a need that you want the church to pray about, Jace? For um, Emory and for Phoebe. Yes, amen. Brother Nathan.
And it truly is a sweet, powerful name. It's the only name. Amen. While you're standing, I want my wife to come. Brother Nathan's wife, Sister Pam, called while we were on the way to church. She's in some severe pain, health issues, and she asked my wife if she would stand in the gap for her and ask if all the ladies that would, would you come forward if you're going to you're going to lay hands on her. You're going to pray for her. That God will move in a mighty way. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, we call up Jesus. We know God is true. Simply because of the subject matter, not because it's a it's it's a bad subject matter, but it's because we as Christians we're guilty of associating certain things in the Bible with certain seasons. Right, right, right. right. We are. Yes, we are. I, I, I'm talking about Christian Christianity as a whole, regardless of what denomination you belong to, uh, because tonight it 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 talks about the birth of Jesus. And as I began to study, Lord, I thought that this is a Christmas story. <laughs> this is something you usually 
talk about, you preach about, you teach about at Christmas time. But I thought, wait a minute, it, it's the Bible. So we could be applied anytime. Yes, we should talk about the birth of Jesus, whether it's December, whether it's February, whether it's the middle of August, and it's 115 degrees outside. It doesn't matter. We have a right to talk about and rejoice and be happy about the birth of Jesus. Because it's because of his birth that led to his death, that led to his resurrection, that led to mine and your salvation. Can you say amen? So why not? The focused verse tonight is found in Luke chapter 2, verse number 10. It says, The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Good tidings of great joy. If you and I ever realize what we truly have living on the inside, we would bear good tidings of great joy. I thought y'all would be more excited about it. <laughs> Which shall be to all people. The good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. That's me and you. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. A Savior. One who saves. One who delivers. You and I could not save ourselves. Right, right. We can't, come on, we can't do anything. We can't do any good work. We can't do any great work to get into heaven. But we have to have a Savior. There had to be a perfect, sinless, spotless sacrifice. Yes. And Jesus Christ is, it was that sacrifice. Yes. And I'm so thankful that I truly have a Savior. Can you say amen? It says, as the crow flies, the distance between Nazareth and Bethlehem was about 70 miles. However, the route most likely, likely taken by Joseph and Mary would have been about 90 miles over a period of four to seven days. Now, ladies, those of you that have born children, you've birthed children. You have to understand that Mary was close to giving birth to Jesus. Imagine riding on a donkey from anywhere to four to seven days. That's what I thought. But yet, but yet they were making this journey. From a political standpoint, the reason for this trip was to respond to a decree of the Roman emperor Caesar Augustus to register for taxation. And you may think, well, what has that got to do with anything? I'm so glad you asked. Because everything that happens, regardless if it doesn't seem like it has a spiritual matter to it, is God's grand design. God's grand plan. They had to be there in Bethlehem for the prophecy that was prophesied hundreds of years before for it to be fulfilled. They had to get to Bethlehem so that Jesus could be born. Right. And so all of this, this political uproar and the taxation, come on. Can I say that it was truly organized by God so that it brought Joseph? Because when you look into it, Wherever your, your, your lineage, your heritage was tied to is where you had to go pay your taxes. Amen. And Joseph, being in the lineage of David, had to go to Bethlehem. And there they found, when they got to Bethlehem, there was Mary about to give birth, all designed by God, because from a biblical standpoint, the birth of Messiah in Bethlehem Fulfilled prophecy found in Micah chapter 5 and verse number 2. It was all designed by God. Amen. You have heard me say it many times and I will say it to the day I die. God does not work on coincidence. Right. Things just don't happen just, just because. God's got a grand design. Those, those people you come across and just happen to, 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 to start talking to, that wasn't just happenstance. That wasn't just 
one of the, the stars around that was God designing, come on, that, that, that involvement because he's got a grand plan. Can you say amen? amen. I know all that rhyme, and I didn't do that on purpose. There was no ready welcome for Joseph and Mary when they arrived in Bethlehem. There was no room for them in the inn. We often can be kind of critical. We've, we've often somehow kind of taken the story and almost made it seem like that the innkeeper was rude. But the innkeeper was just being truthful. Right. I have no room. Now, I'm going to give you my personal opinion about it. If the innkeeper would have known who they were and what they were about, to, what was about to take place, right. the room keeper, the innkeeper would have made some room yeah. somewhere. Can you say amen? I, that's it. You want to kick somebody out. You've been evicted. If they had known. And I've, I've, I've preached this message before at Christmas time. And I've applauded to you and I. Have you and I made excuses when God has dealt with us in circumstances and situations? And we just said, I don't have time. In other words, you and I have, have become just like the innkeeper. I don't have room. But if we can realize what God wants to do in our life, how God wants to use us, we would stop. And we would make room and we would make time to allow God, come on, to, 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 to take place and do what he needs to do. No room in the end. No room in the end. And so you know, you know that they then went to the barn. There she gave, she gave birth to Jesus. And, and I mentioned this some time ago. Through the years, when we have the nativity scenes, it often shows Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and the donkeys and the cows and some, some churches, and I'm not knocking them. If you can do it and get by with it, go right ahead. They do the whole live scene. And they have real donkeys and cows and everything that comes through, more power to them and, and all that. And, 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 and in the nativity, they have the wise men and the shepherd all there giving but 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 when you look at it, the, the wise men and shepherd were not there at the same time. They were there two different times. The shepherds were told of, of the story of the birth of Jesus, and they went to find and, and there they found the baby, the, the infant, and, and, and they they worshiped and they praised and they gave thanks to God. But when you look into it, the shepherds came about, I mean the wise men came about about two years later. About two years later, and gave worship to the, the, the young baby. The biblical account of Jesus, his birth is simple and straightforward, yet magnificent. Jesus' birth is recorded only in Luke. We are not told how long Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem before the birth of Jesus it says Mary was, we, we discussed this great with child, and while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of all, the God who created the universe, who spoke worlds into existence, a God who's all-knowing that I think the writer in Psalm says that he knows the stars and he calls each one of them by name. Go out on a clear night if you can and look at all the hundreds and millions and thousands or however many stars there, there are. And my God is so powerful that he knows every single one of them by name. Right. And what's even more mind-blowing than that, that the same writer in Psalm says, what is man that thou art mindful of them? Right. He knows who you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're faced with. And he loves you. And he's there for you. He's going to carry you through. He loves you so much that he died for you. And he died for me. This, 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 this being, this spirit, this, this king of kings and lord of lords who, who knows all the stars knows who you are. And yet in all the grandeur and the splendor
Savior of Heaven, according to what the Bible said, we can. I, sometimes I try to imagine when I get over to the Book of Revelation and it talks about the description of heaven, the streets are pure gold, not paved but pure gold, and the wall. I try to imagine what it's like, and my poor, feeble, come on, humanistic mind cannot imagine, and yet. All this splendor and glory, Jesus chose to be born in a barn. Yes. Showing himself to be an humble servant. How much more should you and I learn from Jesus to be humble? Yes. It's not always about the fanfare and the name and the lights. Can you say amen? amen. Yeah, I, I got hit with a thought today, and, and I told my wife, I said, I'm, I'm trying to trying to pull it together and, and preach a message about it. So if you hear this again, I want y'all to shout like y'all never heard it before, okay? <laughs> I got hit with a ton of bricks today. I was listening to, to, to a guy on the radio as I was on the way home, and, and he was talking about John the Baptist. And, and, and so many times, I know all of us probably have a character in the Bible who we we, 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 we like they're probably our favorite character other than Jesus, obviously. And there's many that like David. And, but you, you look and you think about all these great, notable characters in the Bible. I want to be like, I want to be like Peter and, 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 or, or Apostle Paul. And the anointing that was on them so strong that, that one of them, they passed by people and the shadow just overshadowed people and they were healed. Right. Another one they put handkerchiefs on and, and, and cloths on and, and, and the anointing was so strong that they, they put them on people and they were healed. And we, we, we desire a ministry like that or we want to be like Abraham who was called the friend of God. Or we want to be like Moses who the Bible says was the meekest man in all the earth and still holds that title. Or we want to be like David who's described as a man after his own, uh, his own heart, a man after God's own heart. And, and then we look at those characters. But I told my wife, I said, but here is a mind-blowing thing. Is that there was a man by the name of John the Baptist who the Bible says did no miracle. Not one. Not one. He never raised the dead. He never healed the sick. He never parted the waters. He never cocked armors. He did none of that. But Jesus said... There's not a greater than John the Baptist. You say, what's that got to do? Come on, just because you don't have some great ministry that you're preaching to hundreds and thousands, we in our minds in Pentecost have got it conjured up that if I'm not preaching to hundreds and thousands, I'm not successful. Hogwash, John the Baptist filled his role and filled it well. He was a forerunner. He baptized people and said, look, there's one coming after me. No great miracles, no hundreds and thousands of people. And Jesus said, there's not one greater. You do what you know to do. It may seem simple to some people, but fulfill your role. Yes. And watch God use you and bless you. Yes. Man, maybe, maybe you didn't need it. Maybe I needed to hear that. Even before this night, come on, that the angel came to the shepherds. And there we find he's, he tells them that, come on, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I come to tell you something exciting that there's a Savior being born. It's the Messiah. It's Christ himself being born. But before all that took place, you see... Gabriel came down to Mary and told her, said, Mary, you found favor with God. Theologians think that she was anywhere from 13 to 17 years old, somewhere along in there. She was a, she was a virgin. She had never known man. And, and yet, yet she found favor with God and said, you're going to carry the Messiah. You're going to carry the Christ child. You're going to carry the one who's going to be the Savior of the world. We see the way God operates, God always operates in full capacity. Yes. Because there was a man by the name of Joseph who was engaged, his, his spouse or engaged to marry. They were, they were set to be married, but they weren't there yet. And they had not been together. 
And I'm trying to use my language carefully. You don't know what I'm talking about. They had not been together. And so God not going to leave Joseph out in the dark. Sends an angel to Joseph and lets him know. Just to let you know what's going on. Here's what's taking place. We often talk about Mary and, and, the, and, the, and the sacrifice she had to make and the possible gossip of the town being a virgin. And, you know, so she says, but yet she's carried a child. And, and all. But you've got to understand the responsibility that Joseph himself took upon himself. Amen. Knowing he had not been with this woman, and yet now she's expecting. And she, she promises that she's still a virgin. You've got to understand the reputation that he's taken on as well. But he knew he had a heavenly visitation who told him what's going on. Can you say amen? amen? And that's just the way God works. He's not going to leave you hanging. Come on. He's not going to tell, tell somebody something about you and not let you know. Come on. He's going, he's going. He always comes through. He fulfills his promise. And so this great, this good tidings and great joy, they're rejoiced in the Savior being born. Fear not, for behold, I'll bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord King. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What a place for the King of kings and the Lord of lords to be. And they rejoiced over this event. They rejoiced that they got to witness that the Christ child had been born. That the Savior had been born. The angel's message was good tidings or good news. This is the meaning of the word gospel. Glad tidings. Good news. The same word is used both in Luke chapter 2 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Good tidings. Good news. The gospel. You and I you and I have been given the gospel. If it was good news back then, guess what? It's still good news today. If people got excited about the birth of Jesus back then, should you and I not get excited about the birth of Jesus today? If people got excited about a Savior coming to the world to take away our sins back then, should you and I not get excited about a Savior who came to the world to take away my sin and your sin? Amen. And you and I have a duty to share the gospel. We need to have good tidings. We need to have good news. Come on. If this world needs anything in this present time that we're living in, it needs a good news. Everywhere you turn, it's bad to press the news. But you and I should be able to say, but I got good news. I serve a God, amen, who wrapped himself in a robe of flesh, who came down on earth, amen, and sacrificed himself and gave his blood for our sins so that we don't have to die and go to a devil's hell. Amen. The shepherds rejoice in what they experienced. How much more should you and I rejoice in what we have experienced? Everybody here that's been filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to take a moment and think back to the day, the night, the time that you were gloriously filled with the Holy Ghost. Just for a moment. Just go back in time and think about it. Now, just for a moment, remember the excitement that you had? The joy that you had? That God had just filled you with His Spirit. Amen. Yeah. You were so excited. You wanted everybody to have this. Yes, you were so excited. You sit on the front row. Mm -hmm. er. <laughs> <laughs> he's just as exciting today. Yes. Or he should be. Oh, yes. As when he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yes. I should have a smile on my face today. Just like the did when God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I should have 
great joy and good tidings today just like I did when God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I remember very well it was on a Sunday. I kept leaping and I was so excited. Come on, it's still the same today. It's still the same tonight. It's good tidings. It's great joy. God's been so good to me. If anybody ought to be able to walk around with a smile on our face, despite our circumstances, despite our situations, it ought to be us, God's people. Why? Because he's been so good to me. He's blessed us. He's kept us. He's watched over us. And I'm thankful. I told somebody tonight, today, tonight, I'm extra thankful that I don't live just a few hundred miles north of here. Amen. Amen. Right. That in itself ought to give you something to give God praise about. Yes. <laughs> and we need to pray for those. In all honesty, we need to pray for those. Because it's a severe winter storm coming through. Let's hold those up in prayer. And God's mercy and grace will be extended to them. Can you say amen? amen? And we find, we find, when the wise men came, they saw a star and they traveled a great distance. As we already mentioned, it was some two years down the road. Mary and Joseph were still hanging around in the town. And, and, and they came seeking the, the child, the king, the Christ child. And, and when they found him, the Bible says that they brought him a gold, brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We often use that and, and in skits and plays. And nativity scenes, we always see it's usually three wise men. But I can tell you, according to history, that it wouldn't have been just three wise men to travel that great distance. Just three of them. More than likely, there were some, some commentary said it could have been upwards of 70 traveling all together in one man. The biggest reason was for safety and protection. Amen. Regardless, they brought gifts to Jesus. They brought something to him in worship and in praise. How much more should you and I, when we come into his presence, when we come to his house, how much more should you and I bring gifts? Not that we have gold, and if you do, you've been holding out on us, or frankincense, or myrrh, and maybe some of you have some of that in essential oils. I don't know. But I come to tell you that He's not necessarily looking for gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But he is looking for gifts. What kind of gifts, Pastor? He's looking for some praise. And he's looking for some worship. And he's looking for some thanksgiving to escape our lips and escape our hearts. He's looking for the gift that you come to him and say, Lord, here I am. I don't have much to offer, but here I am. I ask you to use me. And in that, we bring our gifts to him. We offer up gifts to Him. And He is so, so worthy of what we can give to Him. I cannot, I, I've had a burden the last few days and I feel like the message that I heard today was sort of a, a confirmation that, that sometimes we, we feel like that because we're, we don't hold a position in church or we're not a big name preacher or a pastor that we mean nothing to God. Let me tell you, God uses every single one of us and if all you can do is clap your hands, you'd be the best hand clapper heaven's ever had, that God's ever had. Use what you've got. Use it for and bring it as a gift to him. Yes, amen. I'm reminded of a story where Jesus was standing at the offer plate watching what everybody was giving. Guess what? He still stands at the offer plate and watches what everybody was giving. You just don't see him in the bodily form. But the Bible says... And one, it says that the rich people were giving up their abundance. They were laying in the hundred dollar rolls, man. They were given to the building fund. They were given to the missions. And along come this little widow woman who cast in the King James Version says two mites, which equals to almost a half a penny. She threw that in. And she walked off. And Jesus called all of his disciples over and said, Hey, did you see that? Yes. 
She gave more than anybody else. They were like you and I. They're looking at the literal money. And they don't add up. God doesn't add up like you and I add up. He said, I'm not talking about necessarily the amount. I'm talking about what she gave from the heart. That's all she had. And she gave everything. Listen, what God's looking for is not necessarily, come on, your wealth and your riches. What he's looking for is you. Give him you. That's the greatest deal that you and I can give him is ourselves. Can you say amen? amen. Don't, let, don't be discouraged by a lack of talent. Listen, everybody in my family around me sings. Everybody. Everybody except for me. I get around my wife, my wife says, mm -hmm. listen, I get around my wife's family, they all play, and they all sing, and I just look over there and just look good. <laughs> I don't have that talent. I can't play. My dad plays the guitar, he plays the, 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 the piano, he plays the bass, and he can pick on the banjo, and I can play the radio, and that's about it, and sometimes I have trouble with that. <laughs> but just because I don't have those abilities, does not mean that I'm less in the eyes of God. Just because you don't stand up here means that you are less in the eyes of God. You give God yourself. That's all God's looking for. I said it before, I'll say it again. Because there's somebody out there you can reach, that you can talk to, that I can't talk to. And nobody else can. God's got a purpose and a reason. Can you say amen? And when we find that purpose and reason, we can, come on, we can have, we can express to people our good tidings and the gospel of Jesus. Yes. Born, died, resurrected, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. Those of us who have had the Pentecostal experience, we follow the example of, of the 3,000 who believed Peter's words and were baptized in water and spirit. They received the word gladly. They received the word gladly. Praising God for what they had experienced. How much more should you and I praise God for what we have experienced? That God has filled us with the Holy Ghost. That he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That you and I are not on our way to a devil's hell. Amen. We now have our name written down in the Lamb's book of life. And there are some here who are actively seeking for the Holy Ghost. You, you, you should be happy because you have that opportunity. Come on, God's promised that gift to you that you can have the Holy Ghost. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. You keep seeking. You keep asking. You keep knocking. You keep trying. You tell God, I ain't going nowhere. And you come, you won't get sick and tired of me coming up here and saying, I want the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to quit until you give me the Holy Ghost. The, the promise is to all of us. My boys, Kelton's been filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Chase, seeking the Holy Ghost. My Lord, he, 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 he had those tears flowing Sunday night. His little lip was quivering. And boy, if he'd been speaking in tongues... I've knocked over every chair in this, in this auditorium. I swung from the light. Every single one of one to the other around here. Come on, the promise is to him. And if the Lord tarries long enough and they have kids, the promise is to their kids too. For as many as the Lord our God shall call. That promise is to, is to, is to good tidings and the great joy of the gospel. It's to each one of us. Can you say amen? amen. Can we give the Lord a good hand clap? I pray this morning. discouraged. Don't be down. You've been given something. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago that the Bible says that the angels desire to look into it. You've got something that the angels desire to know what it's like. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down. My pastor had come into Tennessee. He was in the military. And he would say that there was a, a saying that they used to say quite often when he was in the military. He, they would say, soldier, soldier, don't look down. There's no discharge on the ground. Right. Can I tell you, soldier, soldier, don't look down. 
You can't find victory laying on the ground. Come on, we got to hold our head up high. Why? Because I belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I got more of the Lord. I got the name of Jesus applied. The greatest name I've got to apply to my life. Yes, amen. Yes. For that, for that, amen. I have good tidings yes. and great joy. Yes. Amen. Let's all stand if we would. Let's all bow our heads. Still, Lord, we come before you tonight. Jesus. I thank you, oh, Lord, that man. you stepped off the throne room of heaven. And you wrapped yes. yourself in the robe yes. of flesh. And you walked among men. And you sacrificed and you shed your blood. Amen. And you were resurrected. And now we have a promise of salvation. Yes. It is that great joy that we have of your spirit living on the inside. Hallelujah. I rejoice that we have that promise given to us. And then we can carry the whole gospel to the whole world. Yes. And I pray as we walk out of this place, Lord, that we would allow your spirit to be manifested in us. Not necessarily in the words that we say, but in our actions, the way we carry ourselves and the way we conduct ourselves and the way we live our lives. Because if we live according to your word, people will take notice and they will ask. Yes. And then we begin to tell them about the gospel, the good news. I pray for everyone that's here tonight that you would abundantly bless them with divine favor the rest of this week. I pray you open doors that's never been thought imaginable, Lord. I, will, I pray for our church as a whole, God, that you would lead us and guide us and direct us into the next dimension. God, that we will experience things in our services like we've never seen before. God, that you would just gloriously fill people with the Holy Ghost. God, that you would continually move, that you would provide miracles and healings and deliverances, God. And God, that you would, you would take us to that next level, God. And I praise you, and I glorify you, and I magnify you for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said amen. amen. Come back Sunday expecting a great move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Allow God to move. Thank you for being here. Go tonight and realize you carry good tidings and great joy with you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.